Donald Trump's continued embrace of rhetoric encouraging violence against American citizens, the latest suggestion being that Liz Cheney should have guns, quote, trained on her face. It's brought us to a disturbing question about where we are as a country and where Trump could take us next. Our old friend Steve Schmidt warns of this, quote, what do I see? I see fascism. I see it clearly. It announced itself long ago. I see that fascism has come to America. I see that Donald Trump is the leader of a dangerous movement that stands against something I hold very dearly, liberty. I see that he preaches a venomous gospel of division. I see that he stokes violence. I see what is coming and it is terrible. I see the threats being made into law. I see the abuse of power that is coming. I see the cynicism that allowed it to happen. I see the catastrophe at hand. Get ready. Joining our coverage, my long old dear friend, former Republican strategist, political commentator, founder of the Warning newsletter and podcast, Steve Schmitz here. Hi, friend. Hi, Nicole. How are you? I mean, I'm thinking of you and all of your work for the Cheneys, and um, I, I wonder where you think we are, that this is where the final message of Donald Trump's third campaign for president is, talking about rifles, nine of them, trained against Liz Cheney's face. It's been an astonishing week in American politics, as your previous guest, Dr. Snyder, talked about what occurred in Madison Square Garden in 2024 was a worse version of the fascist rally that occurred there on the edge of World War II when England was fighting for survival against the Nazis. The German-American boon hung banners of George Washington flanked by swastikas. What Dr. Snyder said correctly is what was said there uh, is being said now. And so 120 hours before a presidential election, we have the MAGA candidate, the fascist candidate, uh, threatening the life of one of his most vocal critics, uh, making it clear, and you have to connect the two events, because it's not just the threat. It's the fact that he has created a movement that is filled with people that in the 1960s would have been referred to as little Eichmanns who would pull the trigger. When you loose the hatred, when you see the contagion of the crowd, as we evidenced by its behaviors in Madison Square Garden, you're at a dangerous hour. So this country has been in dangerous moments before, even more dangerous and dire than this. But we should recognize the great danger at hand and the momentousness of the choice that is now fully before the American people who will decide a fundamental question, which is, does a ruler decide he takes charge of our lives, lock, stock, and barrel, whether we like it or not, or do we, the people, do we, the people, decide who leads the country under the law, under the Constitution, with limited powers for a short period of time? That question is very much at hand. You and I worked on the 2004 presidential campaign together in which George W. Bush prevailed mm -hmm. in the 2008 campaign in which uh, Senator John McCain came up short. And in neither um, was there a conversation about whether John mm -hmm. McCain would concede that night. He delivered one of the most glorious speeches of his life in public when he conceded to President-elect Barack Obama. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of the aftermath next Tuesday? Well, I expect the vice president will become the president-elect next Tuesday. I also anticipate, and we must gird ourselves for the possibility that Donald Trump will appear before the cameras and declare himself the victor prematurely, early, without any basis in reality, and that will set in motion chaos. Uh, Elon Musk will let conspiracy theories run wild on X. On X, the winner will not be the winner. Uh, what will Fox News do? Will Fox News even call the race? This will be the first election where we have significant sections of the media who just refuse to acknowledge the reality. So part of the danger we're in 
flows from the fact that the man who's threatening Liz Cheney with nine rifles pointed at her face is also simultaneously declaring that his hate fest was a love fest, that his threats are affections for the American people. So war is peace. Uh, hate is love. Uh, we are in a dystopian era where Trump contradicts himself by deed and word on an hourly basis, and the American people are disoriented by it because, for example, on Fox News this morning, the host there went out of their way to make clear that, no, in fact, Trump did not say what he said with Tucker Carlson, another fascist who preaches a gospel of Hitlerism, every time he opens his mouth and talks about replacement theory, which was core to Nazi ideology. So they are saying things, they are threatening things that have not been threatened since fascists were on the edge of power or held power at different times in different places. How do you think we got to a place where when someone like General Kelly says what you just said, that he's a fascist to his core, it doesn't break through? Well, I don't know that it's not breaking through. If you look mm. at the early vote, it may be breaking through in staggering ways with mm. young women voters mm. and with women voters in general. So Winston Churchill, who was a keen observer of the American people, had this to say about us. He said that in the end, we will always do the right thing after exhausting every other possible <laughs> alternative. And so here we are. Uh, there has always been drama in this country. We have never sailed on, on calm seas, but the American people uh, who are not the wild horde that you imagine them to be on the streets of the country, uh, if you live your life on X, I don't think uh, are going to revel in the madness that's causing all of us so much anxiety. The danger is real, the threats are real, but the goodness of the American people is also very much real.